So, last class we have discussed about the signal size. Suppose we have a signal t in this direction and x of t is in this direction. Suppose signal is like this way, this is x of t. This signal tends to 0 as t tends to infinity. So, in that situation size of the signal is measured by the energy content in that signal. So, we have seen how to find out the energy content in the signal. Suppose the signal x does not tends to 0 just like this way something like this. x of t which does not uh, x of t which does not tends to 0 as t tends to infinity then we cannot give the size of the signal by a energy signal. So, we have to define by a what is called power signal and power signal we have defined how to find out the, the signal size in power signal form that is <coughs> limit t tends to infinity. 1 by 2 t minus t 2 plus t x of t mod square d t. That mod is taken for if the signal is a complex then mod otherwise x t whole square is a positive quantity always in this way. This is nothing but a average power this expression that we have seen it. Then directly we went to find out the system signal norm in case of system what is the what do you mean by system in case of system what do you mean by signal norm. So, suppose we have a system which is described in a transfunction domain where u is the input in time domain u of t and s domain u of s y is the output in time domain and this that system that signal may be a scalar may be a vector and we have defined and this signal is continuous and piecewise continuous that is assumption is made. And this is the general definition of the p norm. L norm is nothing but a the absolute value of this signal from minus infinity to plus infinity that quantity when p is equal to 1. When p is equal to 2 we call is a true norm of a signal. In case of scalar signal it is like this way not we represent the double line both sides x 2 norm is minus infinity to plus to infinity in this expression you put p is equal to 2. So, this is square is nothing but a square of the signals magnitude and this 1 by half the whole that is missed here 1 by half. So, this is nothing but a square root of square root of the sum of these squares of the signals and L 2 L infinity norm is simply called infinity norm of a signal is nothing but a supremum value of this signal over the time t tends to infinity supremum that means least upper bound. Then <coughs> what do you mean by least upper bound we have seen it that if you have a signal like this way the least upper bound of this thing is 1 agree okay? that this value is will be that function value or signal function will be always less than 1 and which upper bound is 1. So, it is the least upper bound is of the signal is 1 that is what and is another way <coughs> and this is the supremum and infimum value of a signal is nothing but a greatest t a greatest lower bound. That means, lower bound what is the lower bound greatest lower bound that is called the infim, infimium of a signal. So, similarly this can be extended if the signal is a vector where the x of t has a n components are there. They are also we can represent into similar manner that is what we have done. Then we have discussed norm of a system just now we have considered in case of system what is the norm of a signal we have discussed. Now, we will discuss norm of a system and if you see once again if you have a system g of x when it is excited with a input 
which is the sinusoidal A sin omega t, the output also we expect is sinusoidal with different magnitude and different phase angle, but the frequency will be same because it is a linear linear time invariant systems. Suppose now see input signal is A sin omega t and output signal will go at it A mod of g j omega sin omega t plus phi and what is the gain input output by input if you see gain is g j omega. So, the system norm in a psi watch of system in a trans function is usually measured by either h infinity norm or h 2 norm that let us see what does it mean Percival's theorem that means, suppose we have a signal is there if you want to find out the what is the energy content in that signal agree this you can find out by using Percival's theorem. Now, let us call we have a two signal x and y it that voltage and current if you consider it is nothing but a power <coughs> integration of power minus infinity what does it mean. Then ultimately we have shown it this one if x and y are y is equal to x c then we have seen the integral of minus infinity to plus infinity is the energy contained in the signal is equal to nothing but a 1 by 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity mod of x omega whole square d of this. Okay. So, this indicates the this x of this is the Fourier transform of the signal. So, what this indicates? This indicates that <coughs> this indicates <coughs> that uh, we can write that x of t x of t small x of t norm this square is nothing but a 1 by 2 minus infinity to plus infinity Fourier transform of that signal square d omega that is what we got it last class if you see last class we have did minus infinity is nothing but 1 by t minus infinity to omega d omega. What is this indicates shows this indicate possible theorem tells that energy contained in that signal in time domain it just implies the energy contained in the signal in time domain it can be related with a energy contained in that signal in frequency domain descriptions. This is the frequency domain you find out the Fourier transform of the signal mod of this whole square mod of this whole square means you is nothing but a this same thing whole square over the interval of frequency minus infinity in what is the energy content this signal is same as in frequency domain and the time domain. So, this Percival's theorem the Percival's theorem relates the time domain of the energy time domain of the energy in a signal to the frequency domain description to the frequency domain descriptions. find out the Fourier transform of the signal mod of this whole square and integrate minus infinity to plus infinity with agree. Okay. Now, we will go to the system norm next is our topics is the system norm. So, let us call we have a system 
g of s and output if the system is excited with the input u of t and output is this is the output and we <coughs> the s 2 norm s 2 norm of this system g of s g of s we want to find out what is the s 2 norm of g of s we assume this transformation is strictly proper transformation proper transformation if you do not assume this one then we will not be able to get the h in p norm of a the system g of s is not a finite it will be infinite that is why this assumption is made it and most of the practical system is strictly proper transformation and low pass filter type. So, <coughs> and also assume the system is asymptotically stable asymptotically stable. This system can be described also into a state space model state space description of the system. What is the x dot of is equal to a x of t plus b u of t and our output y of t is equal to c x of t. This is the state space description of the system and we know the correspondingly that g of s if you want to find out the transformation model g of s from the knowledge of the matrices a b c we can find out c s i minus a inverse b and since there is a part d part is there d we assume 0 because of the function the transformation is strictly proper transformation. So, the d term will not be there since it is a strictly proper transformation. So, <coughs> now what do you mean by that system norm of this one that I told you that g of s physical interpretation of g of s is nothing but a the gain of the system at different frequency. If omega is equal to some omega 1, then magnitude of g j omega is nothing will, will give you the gain of the system at that particular frequency. So, the s 2 norm of the system this is defined as and we will see the physical meaning of that one now 1 by twice pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity T r trace this means trace of a matrix G j omega h or star G j omega d omega. This indicates note G j omega h indicates sometimes it is denoted by g j omega star is nothing but a g of minus j omega whole transpose in complex because g of j omega is a complex system and complex matrix or scalar quantity. We assume from now onwards let us call in general g of j omega is a matrix means we if you have a if you have a multi input multi output case the dimension m cross n <coughs> m cross p agree this is the uh, p cross m you just write it p cross m indicates number of outputs is p number of inputs is m agree this and in case of the multi input multi output case h infinity norm of this one is 1 by 2 pi minus infinity to minus infinity trace of this matrix and if you recollect that our definition of what is called 
Frobenius this is called Frobenius norm norm is nothing but a we mention it here nothing but a this is summation of and this dimension of matrix if you consider m cross n this is nothing but a i is equal to 1 to m j is equal to 1 to n this is 1 to m 1 to n then a i j whole square then whole of this this is nothing but a is same as if somebody wants to write it this whole expression is same as trace of a matrix a transpose a is same as transpose trace of a into a transpose this is a Frobenius norm here also same thing if you have a g is a transformation of multi input multi output then you find out the Frobenius norm of that one okay? and then do the integration minus infinity to plus infinity this and 1 by 2 pi this indicates is nothing but a energy content in the signals because c is the uh, that is uh, g of s is the matrix. So, this can be written as 1 by 2 pi One by two pi integration minus infinity to plus infinity trace in terms of you can write it trace g of minus j whole transpose in place of this one I am writing this then g of j omega and that is differentiate with the and that is if somebody wants to write it in terms of s he can also write into this one 1 by twice pi minus j infinity to plus j infinity this is infinity g of s minus g of s transpose g of s ds and this quantity if you see this quantity is nothing but a Frobenius norm trace of this one is nothing but a g of j omega whole Frobenius norm of the matrix. Okay. <coughs> so, which is nothing but a this a, this is nothing but a in other words it is nothing but a i is equal to i j or you can write i is equal to 1 to m j is equal to 1 to p Agree? and g j g i j of omega square this you can write it. <coughs> so, i is equal to 1 to p this is 1 to p this is j is equal to 1 to m number of inputs is we have considered m number of outputs is p in this the c here in this expression. So, one can write into this form also that this expression this is the trace that is missed here trace t r a trace of that one. So, this thing the trace of this I can easily is the trace of this one I can easily have nothing but a Frobenius norm of g or summation of i is equal to 1 to p or j is equal to 1 to p that each element of the transfer function at a frequency omega is equal to omega 1 that is also and one can <coughs> write into this is also in time domain g of s norm is equal to h h 2 info h 2 norm g of t is nothing but a this is equal to we can write it integration of integration of 0 to infinity trace g of tau transpose g of tau this whole thing then d tau 
this is the point. and this physically this mean, mean a, a measure of energy a measure of the square root square root this is the square root of the square root of the integral integral the of the integral square value of the output signal when the system is excited with a impulse input when the input is an impulse. So, I know if it, the g of s is a transformation if you excite this system with a impulse input the output response of this one is nothing but a Laplace inverse of g of s is that one. So, this physically this indicate that square root of square root of the integral square this is minus infinity to plus infinity if you can write it minus infinity minus infinity to plus infinity <coughs> and if you consider this is a causal system then it will be a coming from 0 to infinity. Okay? The square root of the integral square of the output signal when the input is impulse. So, <coughs> now question is how to compute that things or how to compute this in terms of g s how to compute this one. Next question is how to compute this integration of that one. So, that is the next question or you can write it g of s norm 2 norm is equal to root over 1 by twice pi i and integration the close integral of this one trace g of minus s transpose g of s whole d s. Now, question is how to compute how to compute this expression. how to compute this expression to find that h 2 norm of a of the transfer functions of the systems. So, this is and this can note this can be done by using the Cauchy integral principle. So, the contour integral that run up the imaginary axis axis and and then and then around around the infinite semicircle in the left half plane left half s plane and the contribution of the integral integral from the for the left half semicircle is zero the contribution integral contribution the contribution to the integral from this semicircle equals to 0. 
if g is strictly proper trans functions. <coughs> so, now we have to integrate because whole semicircle part that is left up of the spline is 0. So, only the things we have to integrate from minus j on the along the imaginary axis from j from minus j infinity to plus j infinity. So, the our problem now boils down to this competition of this one equals by using the residue theorem equals the sum of of the residues of g minus s transpose g s at its stable or stable poles or left up left up poles of s. So, this let us call we take in one example we take in one example then see how to find out the we take in one example and how to find out g of z norm of norm find out the norm of h 2 norm of g of s h 2 norm of g of s is 1 by suppose the system is 1 plus tau s this is. So, h 2 norm this indicates that you have to find out 1 by twice pi j minus j 2 infinity to plus infinity g of minus s transpose g of s d s. So, I told you the whole complete left up of the s plane semicircle agree that part is 0 only along the imaginary axis and along the imaginary axis is nothing but a sum of the residues compute for this matrix at stable poles at stable poles. So, let us call find out g <coughs> minus s transpose of g s is nothing but a s minus s tau plus 1 this is g s and transpose has no meaning because it is a single input single output case then s tau plus 1. Then what is the residue of this one at time at, at a stable poles s is equal to minus s is equal to minus 1 by tau. So, find out the residue s is equal to minus or you can find out a plus s tau plus 1 plus b minus s tau plus 1. So, you have to find out the residue at stable poles a the value of a will be equal to 1 by 2 tau by using the residue. So, what is the value of that one this competition of that one is that whole thing competitions is find out the residue of that one along this one. <coughs> this is nothing but a residue of this is nothing but a residue of g transpose minus s g of s at stable poles. So, this so our this implies that our g of s the norm of this 2 is equal to <coughs> square root of 1 by 2 tau is nothing but a 1 by square root of 2 tau. But if it is a multi input multi output case then it becomes very tedious and complex. So, that can be handled by using in state space model for multi input multi output case for multi input multi output case 
composition of of g j g of s this is not straight forward is not straight forward. So, how to compute this one? So, <coughs> so let us call g of s which is a multi input multi output which a m is p is the number of outputs p is the uh, p is the number of outputs m is the number of inputs and that state space representation state space representation convert into state space representation that x dot is equal to ax plus bu and y is equal to c x of t and since I have considered number of outputs is p and number of inputs is m then let us call this is the state is n. So, first you find out the either controllability gramian matrix. So, how to find out that for multi input multi output case the h infinity sorry h 2 norm of the systems. H 2 norm of the system it does not it means the energy content in the system for different signals of this one. I told you G f s is a when the input is the what is called the impulse input the output that what we are getting getting corresponding to input is the output signal and what is the output signal contents in contents in the system that can be find out with the help of h infinity uh, h 2 norm of a g s for a impulse input. So, now two methods two way we can two ways to compute g of s when g s is a multi input multi output case. So, let us call we first find out the Contributive Gramian. The Contributive Gramian U e is equal to 0 to infinity and we are assuming the system is a causal that <coughs> E of t this B B transpose A of T whole transpose D of T. So, this is the controllability uh, Gramian and this matrix must be a this whole expression must be a value will must be a your positive non zero values. If it is a non zero value for all T then system is controllable. If you recollect that one when we have considered the linear time invariant systems then with the knowledge of system matrices B A we found out A B then A square B then, then A n minus 1 B the rank of this matrix must be equal to n where n is the dimension of the matrix A n cross n. <coughs> so, this in other words you can check the Gramian matrix whose value is greater than 0 for all t then system is controllable in the sense that any there exists some controller over the interval t 0 to t f by which we can transform that state from initial condition to the final state with the help of controller and there exists some controller if this condition is satisfied. So, what will do it? So, you solve this <coughs> Lyapunov equation so this is the Lyapunov equation you solve it or you can consider that this is a what is called algebraic Riccati type equation type also so solve this one once you solve this one then find out that norm of that is nothing but a h2 norm of the system is nothing but a trace of C u C transpose, 
stress of a matrix. Stress of a matrix is nothing but a sum of all diagonal elements. So, that will give you the what is called H 2 norm of the systems. The physical interpretation H 2 norm of system means the system is there, you are excited the system with a impulse input, then output response is nothing but a Laplace transform or Laplace inverse of inverse Laplace transform of G of S and that is the in time domain, what is the energy content in the output signal that it can be found out with this one. This is method 1 for whether it is a single input or a single input, single output, multi input, multi output does not matter, you have to solve this Riccat equation. Method 2, this is called controllability Gramian matrix. Now, we will consider the observability Gramian matrix that S is equal to 0 to infinity that you can get it from this one. A is replaced by A transpose, B is replaced by C transpose. If you A replaced by A transpose, it will be A T whole transpose, then B is replaced by C transpose, then C transpose C into A A T whole. A is transposed by A is replaced by A transpose, A transpose and whole transpose is a A and D T. And this Gramian observability Gramian matrix, this is called observability Gramian matrix. matrix. If the observability Gamian matrix value is greater than 0 for all t, then system is observable. That means, we can estimate the state information at time t is equal to 0 by processing the input output data of the system, then we can estimate the initial value of the states. If the system is observable uh, observability Gramian matrix is greater value is greater than 0, because whole quantity is a scalar quantity for greater than 0 for all t. So, with this one I can also compute the what is called to solve the again the Riccati equation that Riccati equation is A transpose S that S A. In this equation, in this equation you replace A by A transpose U in state of Gramian matrix U, you the observability Gramian matrix. So, this plus C transpose C is equal to 0. So, this is the Lyapunov type equation one can solve by standard technique by solving this one or you can use for solving this one you can use algebraic Riccati equation solution if you know we have discussed when you are considering the LQR problem or LQG problem in our optimization technique that is dynamic optimization technique. You can use that method to solve this one. So, once you get it this one that H 2 norm of the system this is nothing but a trace of or T r you write it B transpose S B. Okay. So, this way you can compute it. So, next is your this is the H 2 norm and next is our H infinity norm of a system. G of S. Let us call we assume because H infinity norm concept is coming from the singular value for multi input multi input but that concepts is different. So, let us consider we have a single input single output case u of t y of t is the output. So, it is a single input single output systems it is defined as g of s that whole infinity is equal to supremum value of this function omega not omega 
u of t not equal to 0 y of t this is the time domain I am expressing u of t when input is impulse input the output uh, response of the impulse output response y of t due to the impulse input this or any input you can write it the what is the energy content into the system output signal energy content divided by energy content in the input signal that ratio that what value of u when u is not equal to 0 that this quantity will be maximum that right, that supremum value of this ratio will give you the h infinity norm. But if you talk about the system in terms of frequency domain this is the input and this is the output and if you consider for stable system the h infinity norm of the system g s is nothing but a g of s supremum w g of j omega. What does it mean? That g of j omega you find out the frequency response of the system when the omega is varying from 0 to infinity and find out at what frequency it gives the maximum value of this amplitude or gain and that is nothing but a h infinity norm of a system when this is single input single output case. So, you restrict our discussion with a single input single output case because multi input multi output case the concept of singular values decomposition singular value decomposition technique will be adopted here singular values concept of singular values will be adopted here. This quantity the whole quantity is the maximum maximum gain of the system <coughs> or in fact it is a resonance at what frequency resonance is occurred the maximum peak is occurred this is and so this is about the system mark because system norms signal norm will be used when you are test, um, discussing the robust design of controllers agree? h infinity controllers or h2 con h2 controllers when we will discuss this and that concept will be used now so far we have seen that if you have a system is there if you excite the system with the input and you will get the output the system stability is study, studied from the knowledge of that what is called based on input output stability criteria we are checking the in, uh, stability of the systems that is in turn it we call is input output stability. So, in two sense the system stability is studied we have to study all the internal signal of the system must be stable then it will be a call the system is stable in true sense, but input output stability does not give the clear picture of the system stability. So, let us see with an example that we have a system let us call we have a system g of s is equal to s minus 1 s sorry s plus 1 s plus 1. So, this system there is a pole 0 cancellation is there but stable pole 0 cancellation you see the stable pole 0 cancellation is there. This implies mathematically mathematically in this thing able it we cannot I mean distinguished from the constant transfer function g of s is equal to 1. 
same thing I can do, but here is stable pole zero cancellation is there. So, long stable pole zero cancellation is there, there is no problem except the system properties will change either it may not be controllable completely or it may not be observable completely. But in similar wise like similarly if G s is equal to s minus 1 s plus oh sorry s minus 1 s minus 1 still this is mathematically indistinguishable from the constant trans function. This mathematically it is same as the constant trans function because if you cancel this one this will be a <coughs> one only. But let us call for the sake of our interest we assume that this pole at 1 and pole at uh, pole at 1 and 0 at 1 they are not exactly overlapping that slightly change instead of pole at 1 I am taking pole at 0.9999 and now immediately you will say the system is unstable because they are not cancelling each other the system is unstable because you can logically you can think of it the system parameters may deteriorate with day, day years. So, this uh, this parameters um, uh, after that it may not be 1 exactly it may be 0 0.99. So, let us call <coughs> this type of pole 0 cancellation unstable 0 and unstable pole cancellation is not allowed. So, unstable pole 0 cancellation in practical plant stroke controller is not acceptable. Let us see why it is not uh, this example when it is a s is equal to instead of 1 it will resume at 0 0.9991 you can say the system is unstable for any kind of signals even the signal magnitude is very small. Let us call we have a system these systems. this is the output y s is the output and this signal is feedback here negative feedback this is r of s reference signal and this signal is e of s and this signal we are considered u of s. Now, see this one <coughs> that e of s if you can find out the transformation between the uh, this signal and this signal this is the output signal this is the input signal transformation this will you will get s plus 1 plus s plus 2 r of s indicates stable signal e of s this signal is stable but if you find out the transformation between r s between y s and r s that means, u s signal you want to check it then this is nothing, but a this you know expression this expression you multiplied by you 1 by s. So, this is considered c of s this is g of s if I consider. So, it is a c of s nothing, but a <coughs> 1 plus g of s into c of s into r of s and that value will come if you see 1 minus s this is I have written c of s 1 by s and that value is always already there this is s plus 2 into s plus 1. So, this you can say e of s is nothing but a e of s is nothing, nothing but a 1 by g of s into c of s into r of s and put the value of c of s yes it will get it and see this signal this r of s this is this indicates for any kind of input or noise or signal r s reference input indicates the signal 
u of s is unstable. So, this signal the internal signal internal signal is unstable for this type system. So, the concept of internal stability and other things is coming to the picture when you will study the stability of the systems. So, internal stability of systems. So, as I mentioned the input output stability input output stability does not guaranteed does not guarantee that the that the other signal other internal signal internal signal are bounded. In this example you see this internal stimulation you have to check all input signal all summer output signal you have to check it all internal signal this is the signal this is also signal all these things. If you see the output this this cancel and you will find it is stable, but before that this will be a unstable signal. So, in general now if you have a block diagram like this way C s is our controller then we have a block of that that one this is u of s this is e of s and this is our plant g of s this is our output i will explain that one this is the reference input and this is the controller and this is the plant and this is your du input disturbance this is called input disturbance input disturbance this is called output disturbance output disturbance output disturbance which is generated by dy and this is your d n measurement noise this d n is the measurement noise. So, now we say we have a system reference input signal then controller then plant the controller output is corrupted with the input disturbance and output of the system actual output of the system is corrupted with a disturbance output disturbance and the measured signal is corrupted with a noise. Generally the reference input disturbances are in low frequency signals and measurement and noise are generally high frequency signals. So, you have to study the stability of the system it does not mean the stability of this system this 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 signals we do not have any control, but inherently inside the system may act. So, if you just study the stability from input and output that y of t that does not mean the system is stable or not that input output stability does not guarantee that other stability signal inside the system is also stable. So, if you study the stability between the this in signal and this signal even it is stable it does not mean that all other internal signal also will be bounded or stable. So, generally we take the output from each summer output is the output of the signals each summer output. So, this is u p of s 
this is is this summer output is this and summer output is y this is also getting y this is the output so we have a how many outputs are there there are four summers are there one two then three then four let us call this signal is y n so you have to study the stability of this one so let us call i am considering the system is single input single output system same thing you can extend for multi output multi output system provided if you take care of the matrix operations better operation during the process so let us call we consider input signal or r this is the input signal where in time to r then d u d suffix u d y and your d n this is the input signal input signal input signal then output signal is your <coughs> e u p y and y n these signals are not in your hand okay the output signal is if you see here the output signal is summer output this one this one y this one and this one that output signal so we have to study the stability of the system internal stability of the system that means we have to find out the input output relationship so you see the our output is what our output is e of s u p of s y of s and y n of s this is our output and this is and our input is here r of s d u of a capital d u of capital d u of s d y of s and d n of s now this, this is our output laplace and in laplace domain this output uh, this input is this is the input and this is the output this input are mapped with a some matrix in a output signal the output signal the input signal so this input are mapped through that system in a another set of signal which we will call output signal we will find out what is the matrices are there naturally you can see there are four inputs four outputs the dimension of the transformation matrix will be 16 4 by 4 4 by 4 that means 16 elements are there you have to find out that 16 elements here okay so we will discuss tomorrow the rest of the part